Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Getting Started with Unity tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be explaining what tweening is and explaining why you should use it in your game. And then we'll move on to a simple example inside Unity where we'll be recreating the change turn button from Hearthstone. I hope you guys are excited. Let's get started. So this video is split up into four steps. Step one will be installing Dotween from the Unity Asset Store. It's a free asset and it'll be really simple to get installed. Step two will be setting up the button, adding the text, making that ready to be used. Then for step three, we'll write a really simple script where we'll detect when the player clicks on the button and when they do, we'll rotate it using Dotween. Then for step four, we'll test it. We'll see that it all works and then we'll wrap up the video there. I hope you're looking forward to it. Let's get started. So for this tutorial, I'm using my Getting Started of Unity project. The link is down below to my GitHub page where you can go find it there. I'm gonna create a new folder inside tutorials to do with this video. So this folder is gonna be called Dotween like so. Okay, that's where our code's gonna go for this video. So we'll make a folder now as well called scripts ready to put our script in. And then we also need a new scene for this. So let's make a new scene. Okay. And then we'll say, save the scene, control S, tutorials, dotween, and we'll call it mm, scene underscore main. Okay. So here's our main scene for this. And I'm just going to tweak the color of the light to be white rather than yellow. That's the scene setup. And then now we need to go to window, asset store, let it load. And then we're going to search for dotween. So that's spelled D-O-T-W-E-E-N. Okay, and it's this second one here. We're going for the free version that has pretty much every feature anyway. Now your button should say download instead of import. Once you've downloaded it, then you can import it and just click import again. Make sure you've got everything in it. It'll take a second to install. Once it's done, this panel will pop up. Click on open between utility panel. Then there's a green setup button and it asks you which modules you want. So the stuff from tweening audio, physics, physics 2D, sprites and UI. We're just going to press apply and have it all. Okay, close that close the asset store and now in your project you'll have a uh, folder here and inside the dotween folder with all the code for it now i'm going to put this inside a separate folder called uh, plugins because we might have other plugins in the future just keep it all neat and tidy there it is so step two let's make the button we're going to go into the hierarchy right click make a new cube we're going to call the cube uh, button underscore turn and then we'll position it at zero 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 by resetting right click on here press reset we want the scale to be one 0.2, 0 0.4, okay? That's what the button's like now. We're gonna add some text to it. So we're gonna add text on the top and on the bottom, but it's not gonna be UI text, it'll be actually in-world text. So the way we do that is we right click, make a new empty game object, reset that as well. And then we'll add on the Text Mesh Pro text component, not the text UI, we just want the text component. Now you'll notice it makes this huge, big text thing here. We don't want it like that. Let's actually start off by typing out end turn, okay? So that's what we want it to say. We want to rotate it 90 degrees on the X, so let's set that to 90. We also want to shrink the size to be a width of 1 and a height of 0.4. And now the actual text size needs to scale down, so let's change the font down till we pick something that seems about right. Um, let's also center the alignment, so center, center. Now, currently, the actual text is inside the, the button, we can't see it. So let's change the pause on the Y to be, let's see what works, uh, point one one okay just slightly elevated off the surface and there we go we're going to change the text to be black so that we can see it on the white button okay and in the game view the camera's all the way over here so let's actually take the camera okay and we want to move the camera over to be at uh zero uh minus one sorry like that and then we're going to rotate the button down okay let's set that to an angle of 45 degrees so now the camera is at zero one minus one so it's up one back minus one okay from the origin the button is at the origin and we rotate 45 degrees so we're looking down at the button now we also want to put some text on the underside because right now if we rotate the button it's actually going to do nothing because this text is not attached to the button so let's drag it on and rename it text underscore end turn if we now rotate the button you'll notice on the x-axis it actually the text is on the button okay so we flip that and we see it. Now we want to go to the text, control D to duplicate, call it text underscore. And in Hearthstone, I think when you're in combat, it says combat. So let's change that to say combat. And we want to rotate that to be minus 90. So it's flipped, but currently it's on the top of the bottom. We want it to be on the, on the bottom. So let's change from 0.55 to be minus 0.55. And now we have ourselves our button. So if I go into the Unity game view, take the button, if I rotate the X, you see we actually rotate flip it over and it says combat and turn okay no matter how you spin it it always works now 
So that's the button setup. Let's move on to step three. So for the code, we're going to make a script called turn button. I've put it in our scripts folder over here. Open it up. I've got rid of the boilerplate code. So we've just got public class turn button. It's a mono behavior. Okay. That's going to go stick on our button. If we actually just add it on now so we don't forget, it's on there. So for the code, what we want to do is we want to detect mouse clicks. So the first part to do that is we write private void on mouse down. Okay, if you actually read it, on mouse down is called when the user has pressed the mouse button while over the GUI element or collider. Now this has a collider on it, so that works. And what we want to do is we want to try to change turn. So try change turn. Okay, we don't have that method, so let's make it private void try change turn. Like so. And then we're going to make this an expression just to make it use one line. Okay, so whenever we click, we try to change turn. The next part is to store whether it's our turn or not. So let's have a private bool for is my turn. And by default, it's actually true because if we start with end turn facing up like we do in Unity, that means it's my turn ready to end. And we also want to store another bool for whether we're currently flipping because we don't want to be able to click it while it's flipping. We want to have to wait till it's done and then click again, okay? So is flipping equals false because by default it isn't. Now normally methods, private void, private void, these happen in one frame. The code has to finish executing before the frame can be rendered. You can also have I enumerators, which are known as coroutines. Those can happen over the course of multiple frames. Now this animation happens over the course of multiple frames, so we need to actually make an I enumerator. So instead of void, we use I enumerator. Okay, I'll call it change turn. It doesn't take anything in, it's just here, okay? Now to call this, instead of calling it normally, we actually call it by doing this, start coroutine, change turn. But we only want to be able to change turn if we're not flipping. So we'll say, if we are flipping, so it's, if is flipping, then return. So whenever we click, we say, well, if we're already flipping, don't do anything. But if we're not flipping, then we can start to change our turn. What's the first thing we do when we try to change turn? Well, we'll set is flipping to true to stop us doing it. Okay, so that's why we set it to true. And when we're done, we set it to false. Okay, so all our code goes in between these two things. We set it to true when we start and false when we stop. In between, we want to say, okay, well, is my turn, this is something else that gets toggled, is equal to not is my turn. So whatever the Boolean is, we now set it to the opposite. So if it's true, it's now false. If it's false, it's now true. The next part is to actually figure out what rotation we should go to and from, because what we want to do effectively is write some code to change this X value to be from zero to 180 and 180 to zero, okay? Based on whichever turn it is, okay? So we'll say rotation is equal to, and then we'll do a conditional. So we'll say, if it is my turn, so if my turn, so is my turn question mark, if it is my turn, then the rotation we are currently at is zero. If not, it's 180. Now, the reason we don't just read the rotation from the actual component is because it's sometimes not zero. Sometimes it might be like 0 0.000001. It's a float precision error. So just so we don't get those problems, we just figure it out, figure it out based on our turn. Okay. Then our target rotation, where we're going to, is based on what our rotation is. If our rotation is zero, target is 180. If our rotation is 180, our target is zero. Okay, so it's just the opposite. So we're gonna say target rotation is equal to, then we'll give it a condition. So here the condition was whether it's my turn. The condition this time is whether um, rotation is equal to zero. If rotation is equal to zero, question mark, then the target is 180. Otherwise, it's zero. So at this point, these two numbers are 0, 180, or 180, 0, okay? Now we actually want to use that to do the animation, but the problem is we don't actually um, have a way to do this inside Unity normally. You'd have to write your own tweening library, but what we've imported is dotween, a tweening library. And tweening is a part of animation to go between two things. So normally, if you've done animation, you have use keyframes. Keyframes, you say, you know, at this time, I want to be at 5 on the X, and at this time, I want to be at 6 on the X. We're doing the same thing, but in code, and we have more control over it, how it works. We don't have to import the Unity animator, well, as in create a new version of the animator and set it all up with the keyframing and rotations. We do it in code. It actually gives us more control, and it's really good for simple things like flipping a button. Whereas if you've got complex character animation with running and stuff and jumping, then you'll actually have to use keyframes. It's not really a good way to do that with this, but this is really good for UI, simple flippings, moving, scaling. It's, it's really good. So to do it, what we need to do is we need to effectively just change our rotation. So we'll make a new tweener, okay? So we'll call it a tweener equals 
And the library we imported is called Dotween. So D O T W E E N. Okay. Dotween dot two. And what this does is when we fill it in, it is a way to tween a property or field. So we're tweening our rotation uh, to a given value. Okay. So we want to go from zero to 180 or 180 to zero. So what we'll say is we'll say open close bracket. Now this is called a lambda. This is more advanced stuff. I'm not going to cover in this video how it works, but basically if you actually read on here, there's obviously quite a bit of text. One of the things it says here is it wants a getter. So this is how we tell it which value to use as the rotation. So rotation. Then if we go back to here, the next thing after the getter, then I can mouse over this. Okay. It won't let me mouse over it properly. Um, no, there we go. Is the setter. Okay. So we need to now um, give it a way to set the value whenever it's doing the tweening. So we're going to say X where, and then what do we do with X? Well, X is the new value. We want to set rotation to be X. Okay. So this is the setter. Whenever um, it gets a new value of the rotation, we want to set this this float over here to be x. Now it's got some problems because we haven't finished writing it yet, but once we've finished it'll be fine. Then the final thing is uh, the end value. So what value are we going to? Well, we're going to target rotation. And then the other parameter is duration. How long does it take for this animation to happen? For my example, I'm going to use one second, okay? Now it's happy. If we put this here, it, it's happy, but we want to add a little bit more to it. We want to say, actually no, we'll, we'll leave it like this, give it a test, and then we'll go back and do the final change. So. What happens, we're going to say on update. So on update is every time it updates, obviously, then what do we want to do? Well, every time this value updates, we want to say, okay, another lambda with the open close and then the equals greater than. We want to set the transform.euler angles. Now, you might think to change the rotation, we change the rotation, but rotation is a quaternion, which is this complex rotation struct. We want to just do it with simple vectors between, uh, like when you're editing it in the inspector, actually, this is using Euler angles, not actually using the quaternion. So we're going to say transform.euler angles equals a new vector three. And what are the values of the rotation? Well, the X value is this, the Y is zero and the Z is zero. We don't rotate on the Y or the Z, just, just the X. Okay. Now, once we've got this tweener, Inside a coroutine, it needs us to return something. We need to return an I enumerator. So this is very weird syntax and it's not that beginnerish really, but we're going to say while, which means just keep doing it. Okay. While the tweener is active. So while it's still doing this, it's active for one second. Remember while it's active, effectively, uh, this, uh, yield return null. If I can type, I can't type apparently. Okay. So yield return null basically means stop here and go to the next frame. So remember, this can happen over the course of multiple frames. So this will happen in the first frame and this and this and this and this and this. Then when we get to here, it's going to say basically skip. Like don't do this next line. Keep going. Okay. While the tweener is active, just keep going. Okay. Once the tweener is not active anymore, then we get past this line and we say we're not done. Uh, we say is flipping is false. That means we are done. Sorry. So set everything up. Keep doing the tweener every frame until it's finished. Once it's not active anymore, then set is, is flipping to false. Okay, step four, let's go test it. Okay, so in Unity, press play. Here's our button. Okay, if we click around it, nothing happens. But if we click on it, the button actually flips. And turn, combat. And turn, combat. Okay, that works. And as I said, there was one last thing I wanted to change just to make it look a bit nicer. Notice how now it goes and it stops perfectly at the rotation. But I think it looks a bit cooler if we go over the top and then bounce back a bit. Now there's these things called easing curves. Okay. So if I go here for you, here are the easing curves or like um, the main ones anyway. So easy, here are the easing functions. We can use these to say how we go between the two values. So by default, we use linear, which is just go straight to that value. Okay. But what we've got here is we've got different options. Now, one really cool one we can use is ease out back. That is what we want. We want to go past our actual value. So it goes over the top, but then it bounces back. So we always end at the value we want to get to, but we actually go past it and bounce back. So if we go back into our code and we want to add one line before the on update, we want to say dot um, set ease. So we're going to set the ease to be ease dot. And then here are all the different ones. We've got out to back. I want to set out back. Okay. Just by adding that line in and now going back into unity, if we press play and test it again, okay, we click it. It bounces to combat, bounces back to end turn. So notice how it goes past it and then bounces back. Okay. Now you can mess as much as you like with the different rotation values. Okay. It's up to you. So I hope you guys had fun with this video. Obviously it was quite simple, quite short. 
feel free to let me know down below what you guys want to see next. I'm actually considering doing some more kind of videos about making mechanics from games. I know this isn't the full Hearthstone button in an actual game, it's just a little bit showing you about animation without using the animator, okay? And it's very easy to go back in. We can actually have these like values driven by other code. With the Unity animator, it's, um, you know, the, the keyframes are fixed effectively, but we want to actually modify this. So for example, maybe once it's done, you want a callback for something to happen. You can quite easily do that. There's on update, there's other ons. Okay, so if we go here, on, okay, there's on complete, on pause, or on, on start. So you can have other functions be called when all that happens. Now, yes, you can do that with the Unity animator, but it requires you to do more setup. You have to then put the mono behavior in a certain place and drag in stuff and set the function names. And it's just a lot more hassle than doing this. It's so much simpler. So I hope you guys see why this is useful. Let me know down below what you think. If you like the video, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. A special thanks to John Selig, Liz Kimber, David McDermott, Josh Folsom, Beard or Die, Dustin Miller, Francisco Diaz, Rec, Joris Letter, Heidi Zorko, Rene, Budere, and Marie Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord, as well as our website. If you could help us out by following on any of those or checking any of those out, that'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.